Hi everyone and welcome. It's wonderful having you here with me this morning. I'm remaking my pine resin cones that I make every year, at least two or three times a year. Uh, but I really like to have them for the holidays because a lot of people around Christmas like to purchase them. So I try to have uh, some stock on hand. And they're one of my favorites to make because I just love the fragrance of resin. I generally always use hard resin that I dissolve in my oils and add into my soap. This is the way I've made it for 30 years. But recently, a very nice fellow reached out from, to me and stated that he uh, gets his own pine resin, which is the sap from the pine tree, by doing what has been done for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, back in the in ancient times, not even ancient times, but our not so recent history, uh, not so distant history, I should say, uh, that's how turpentine, if, if you know what that is, if you don't, then look it up on Google. <laughs> but by drilling into the tree, and getting the resin before it turns into this, the hard resin, or what some people call rosin, which happens when a tree is injured. Uh, oftentimes, this is how it heals itself, by expelling some of its sap outwardly until it hardens, creating, well, similar to a scab on a human wound. Well, if you get that before, if you drill into the tree as this individual does, and this is a business that they have, and this is, like I said, it's a business that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years or longer, so it's nothing new. But uh, it's not something that I would do here, even though I have slash pines, which is where this comes from. We have white pines here, we have slash pines, we have several different varieties, but this is harvested from just slash pines, and I just have a couple of them, and I would never inflict the kind of wound in them that gets this. But there are people who have grow forests just for this purpose, so, hey, and I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to give it a try and see if I can't implement this into my resin soaps, as I've done many times before, and see if I get a similar uh, result. It has a very nice fragrance. It's quite different than the hard resins that I dissolve in oil, which is a more of a stronger, more astringent smell. This is a little sweeter. Uh, and I had to make some modifications to my recipe because this is this is dry. I don't have to make many modifications to my recipe. A few because the resins cause the soap to accelerate and so there are some things I have to do a little differently. But this is full of water, right? Because this is the sap before it dries into the hard resin. So I've had to really modify the recipe and if you ever use something like this, keep in mind that what you're dealing with is something that is comprised of a great deal of water. And I had to do a little bit of math and research to figure out just how much water to deduct in order for this to work. I'll be coloring it with ground pine cones, as I always do. And uh, let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is we're going to mix our uh, aloe vera gel and aloe vera liquid, sea salt and uh, coconut sugar lye mixture into our oils and butters here. And I'm using the usual oils and butters that I use here. Olive, avocado, shea, mango, uh, cocoa butter, cocum butter, and castor oil and some almond oil as well. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start blending in our lye solution first. So here we go. And if I didn't mention this, I am soaping at room temperature because when working with resin, at least in the past, working with my hard resins, um, that is absolute necessity. I don't know using this liquid sap resin, how that's going to work. So you are learning with me because I've done some research and I've not seen anyone else, at least on YouTube, making soap with, um, well, I've never, I've not seen anyone else make soap with hard resins the way I do, and I've not found anyone making it with this either. So I'm really excited to give this a try. I am putting the gentleman's name and his company on the screen, so if this is something you're interested in, you, you, you can reach out to him. that in our resin. I need more hands. And I'm really hoping this doesn't over accelerate trace. I guess we're going to find out, aren't we? is thickening really fast which I suspected it might oh my oh dear okay we're gonna have to go another route so plan B was to get this on some heat and hot process it to get it back to a liquid form and also to when it's hot processed uh, we get a soap we can use faster right uh, because we're forcing through high heat not high heat but heat uh, it to go through saponification and curing much much faster And it's a bit more fluid, but you'll see as soon as it comes up, it's wet. But as soon as it hits air, it starts drying out. So we have to be quick about it. And I think we're about there. I'm just making sure to bring up, I want to make sure every, as much of it is uh, mixed as possible so that we don't end up with any you know big chunks or anything so it's pretty well mixed now and it's perfectly safe other than being hot uh, i've let it cook here for about two hours two and a half hours very slow on a very very on the lowest heat and it went through sort of a gel stage already and I wanted to film more of it, but we had a power outage. We had a storm that came through here in northeast Texas, which we needed because we need rain. But it caused the power to go off, and I don't have my camera and my lighting here on the battery backup like I do my internet. So, anyway, that was that. 
But anyway, I was able to save this, and that's what's more important. And it smells wonderful. I can smell the resin, and that's what matters. Now I'm going to try to just slowly... I'm gonna, this will be messy. No way around it. And uh, just going to go one by one. And pour it into our molds. This is always tricky with these because these aren't terribly strong molds. They're a very, very thin, thin silicone. Not pretty. This is not the or not pretty being made, but this is working, and this is what you call a save. And I just I did not want to waste anything. I hate to waste and start over, and so sometimes we soapers have to think on our feet and uh, do the best we can and sometimes that means taking cold process soap and making hot process soap and there are some real benefits to hot process soap as well um, now it's harder to get finer design although you can with a little bit of work and uh, a little bit of effort but the biggest advantage of course is the ability to use the soap much sooner cures much much faster within 24 to 48 hours this soap is a usable soap These two molds, I think, are ready to move aside and bring on the next ones here. Scooch this over a bit. And I realize this part probably isn't very exciting for you to watch. And yeah, it's going to be messy, messy. Well, it is messy, messy, but they're done. <laughs> so let's take them out of the mold now. All right. So they actually came out of the mold pretty well. Um, they're a little mucky because they're hot process, you know, so there were a few air bubbles. But overall, I think that they came out pretty decent uh, com considering the issues that I had there with the acceleration. They smell fantastic. So the good news is that the raw resin actually has a very good fragrance once going through saponification, very similar to using my raw, or my, excuse me, <laughs> using my dried resins. Um, I would say that it's very similar. Now, I will say that it's different, but part of that is because 
bipines are slash pines, and most of the resins around here are slash and white pines. And the resin that uh, I was sent, I believe, is probably from longleaf pines. I haven't confirmed that yet with the fellow that sent it, but because of where it's located and because of the history there, I think most of the pines that it comes from are longleaf pines. There may be others as well. I'll get clarification on that. But uh, anyway, here they are. <laughs> These will be available in the shop in the next week uh, because, like I said, they're hot process, so they're actually ready to go there. Uh, but I like to give them a week or so just to rest, uh, make sure any remaining moisture has uh, evaporated. But the color, and this is all my fault, uh, and that was when in adding the pine cone, the ground pine cone, I should have added a little bit of, of activated charcoal. I've done that in the past and I forgot uh, because I was just so excited about using the uh, new resin because it darkens it and makes it look more like a pine cone where this is more like a very light <laughs> tan pine cone as opposed to a dark brown pine cone. So I just wasn't happy with this tan color these came out and it occurred to me that I could do something similar to what I did with some bunnies that I made that didn't come out the right color and I dipped them. Uh, and so I thought, how could I dip these without getting rid of the scent? I didn't want to cover the this with another soap. Uh, that would disguise the resin smell, which is the main appeal, I think, of these. And then it occurred to me something that could color it and then leave. <laughs> At least if this makes sense. So here you can see this is the before and this is the after. I think this light is too bright here. Hang on, let me move that light. And you can see the difference where this is more tan, this has a bit more brown. Maybe you can tell uh, it's much more obvious to me here that the, the the difference in these here. Maybe if I set it here with them, I don't know if you can tell or not. Uh, but what I did was I took some activated uh, charcoal bamboo, some black walnut hull, and I actually added in some 24 karat gold dust, which I've used in some soaps before. And I just mixed all that in here together stuck a skewer in it and just dipped it there we go and that's just 99 percent alcohol by the way uh, along with these other things and the alcohol completely evaporates and it leaves behind the color so that, gosh, I wish this light wasn't so harsh here so you could see this because the light's making it look light and it isn't. Um, I don't know what it is. I need better lighting. I'm gonna look into some better lights. These LEDs just, I think, are a little too harsh and they make everything look much lighter than they really are. But anyway, so they, they look much more like pine cones now. Matter of fact, one moment here. So I went and got one of my own pine cones. And so you can see, yes, this is much darker, but it's much closer than it was. Here's one that's dried here. Maybe you can tell a little better. Are they a little more similar? <laughs> Okay, thanks everyone. I'm just playing around and sometimes I get these ideas. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're just passing, but that's it. I appreciate you coming along with me. Have a terrific day and I'll see you back soon. Goodbye.